Thomas M. Dyke has retired. The story you're about to see is true. It concerns two submarines, inescapably linked by fate. The facts about these ships are a matter of official record. The story of their crews might well be that of every man who served his country in ships beneath the sea. We call this chapter the Squail Fish. In a few minutes, you'll know why. On May 23, 1939, the USS Squaler stood out to sea for a test dive in the waters off Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Aboard the vessel were a full complement of officers and men, and a naval architect. It was a routine exercise. The men knew their jobs, there was nothing out of the ordinary. Off the Isle of Shoals, the order was given to execute the dive. Still everything routine, smooth. She went down. But now, instead of leveling off, kept going. Down, down. Suddenly, what had been routine became a frantic emergency. A mechanical failure, and the valve wouldn't close. The squalist became a headline in the morning papers. She settled on the bottom in 240 feet of water. Trapped in her forward torpedo room, still alive, 33 men. They find a smoke rocket. Red signal for emergency distress. Operating close by was her sister ship, the Sculpin. Sighting the smoke rocket, Sculpin spread the alarm by radio and sped for the scene herself. Well, you're through, boy. Finished. Uh huh. Hey, what's the matter with you? Oh, I was just thinking about the squalers. Nothing we can do till we get there. Come on, boy, your deal. Do you know Lenny Harrison? Yeah. Why? Oh, he was transferred to the square list a couple of days ago. Electrician's mate. Ah, oh, that's tough. Nice guy. Yeah. We went to school together. You and him buddies, huh? I was kind of hoping he'd be with us. Yeah, it's too bad. Well, come on, let's play. Stop thinking about him. In response to the Sculpin's dispatch, the rescue ship Falcon and others were soon on the scene. A diving bell was attached to the forward escape hatch of the sunken ship, and miraculously, 33 men were saved. The Sculpin, like an anxious relative, standing by. Amongst the survivors was electrician's mate Leonard Harrison. Next round's on me. No, not tonight. Oh, it's a welcome home party, Lenny. Yours. Oh, come on, you guys. I mean, that's no, right. no, oh, no, 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 Night's our night. Okay. Okay. But I want to tell you one thing. I wouldn't be sitting here tonight like this if it weren't for you guys on the sculpture. Oh, I sure you would. Somebody would have found you. It was a long time down there. Just wait. Listen, boy, you're a hero. You didn't do anything, but you're a hero. Name in the papers and everything. The guys in the engine room. The ones that didn't get out. Well, come on, come on, let's break up. Sure, the next ones are on me. Hey, Lenny, good to have you back, boy. Hey, four more of the same. Three months later, Navy salvage crews raised the squalers from the bottom. Portsmouth Navy Yard, and work began to recondition it. Hey, you heard the latest? What? They're refitting a squalus. You kidding? No, they've been working on it for a couple of months now. Is that right? I got a pal who knows. It's going to be tough finding a crew for her. She's a jinx. 
Well, I don't know. She got back all right, didn't she? You mean if you were transferred to her, you wouldn't squat? Uh-uh. I guess I'm not superstitious. You wouldn't get me inside her for double pay. <laughs> you got too much imagination, Willie. About a year after Squalus had sunk, she was recommissioned for active service, and her name was changed to Sailfish. The Navy knew and understood the feelings of submariners who remembered and would have misgivings about sailing on the old Squalus. So they decided to give her a tough skipper and a picked crew whose imaginations were less prone to be fanciful. Sculpin and Sailfish both joined the submarine force Asiatic fleet. Sailfish skipper had amongst his jobs dispelling the shadow which still lay over the resurrected sub. She had yet to prove herself. Four days before Pearl Harbor in Manila, another link was added to the chain of events which drew tighter the bond between the Sculpin and the old Squalus, now Sailfish. A new man joined the Sculpin's crew. Electrician's mate, Leonard Harrison reporting for duty, sir. Hey, look what I dug up. Lenny! <laughs> you son of a gun! How come? Orders. He's replacing Paulman. No kid, Lenny, this is swell! Hey, Lenny, you know what they're calling your old ship? The Squalefish. How do you like that? Get it? Squalus? Sailfish? Squalefish. Yeah, I heard. Anybody know where she is? Oh, she's out here, wouldn't you know? Just style luck. Voodoo, the whole division. Well, come on, Lenny, I'll show you around. Okay. December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor, a surprise attack. December 8, Manila. It was happening there as well, but headquarters had known it was coming. The submarines had already taken up patrol duties, among them Sculpin and Sailfish. They were at sea when the raid started. Now was the time for Sailfish to prove herself. Down scope. Final stations. Like troop ships. Three, no, four escorts. Bearing, mark. Down scope. We'll fire three torpedoes from the four tubes. Three fish spread. Set the depth to 20 feet. Well, let's get rid of that squalish jinx, huh? This is a shooting observation. Up scope. Change. Bearing. Mark. Three three six. Range. Mark. One eight five zero. Oh. Shoot. Fire one. Fire two. Fire three. How long? 30 seconds. Destroyer, get a setup. Stand by. Shoot! Take her down! The torpedoes fired at the troop ship either missed or went too deep. The fourth aimed at the destroyer might have hit but it could not be confirmed. The sailfish went deep to escape the escort vessels. Her first test had not been an unqualified success. In the autumn of 1942, sailfish and the sculpin were once again brought together, this time for patrol duty out of Brisbane, Australia. In March of that year, sailfish had sunk her first vessel, the Kamagawa Maru, an aircraft ferry and the shadow of her bad luck that had shrouded her was lifted. 
What luck. A broken leg, and he gets this. Have you seen the nurses in here? We go out on patrol duty, and he gets this. Don't know what the old sculpin's gonna do without you, Willie. I'll be thinking of it. <laughs> I'll bet. Well, we gotta be moving. Uh, Willie, catch up with you when we get back. Take huh? your time, boys. Take your time. So long, boy. Good luck. Bye-bye. In October of 1942, Sculpin was on a fifth patrol in the Bismarck Archipelago area, far from Brisbane and the Sailfish. Up to now, she'd had a share of bad luck. Faulty torpedoes, heavily escorted convoys, but today was her day. Her first sinking, the 4,731-ton transport, Naminu Maru. I fold. Three nines. Yeah, I wonder how Willie's getting on. I wonder how those nurses are making out. Are you kidding? He wouldn't stand a chance. They're all officers. <laughs> you don't know Willie. <laughs> Sculpin sighted the Sumiyoshi Maru, approximately 2,000 tons. Peters ran straight and true, an easy mark. Scored two for the Sculpin in a week. She was well named, but like her namesake, her barbs were sharp and dangerous. This was a war to her liking. In Brisbane, sailfish was getting ready for sea. It was November. Torpedoman, first class WC Wilson reporting for duty, sir. Welcome aboard, Wilson. What was your last boat? Sculpin, sir. She's a lucky boat and a good one. But so is this one. Uh, yes, sir. I've heard. Sailfish fought hard that year in the Battle of the Pacific. In June of 1943, she operated around northern Honshu in Japan, and in ten days sank two ships. Pearl Harbor, and for sailfish and sculpin, refitting. The ravages of endless days at sea repaired. For the men, a respite from war, a few days in the world of normalcy. James. Hey, look at that. Hey, Willie. Uh, Willie. Hey, Willie. Stay. Oh, hey, boy, good to see you. The guys I told you about from the sculpin. Oh, Let me how, How long have you been in Pearl? Got in yesterday. So we? Oh, well, this calls for a celebration. Listen, I know a place. Hey, uh, Willie, uh, I got a date. A date? Yeah. Well, maybe she got a friend. Two or three. It's uh, his girlfriend, Willie. Yeah, uh, she's with the Red Cross. She's stationed out here. Only found out about it today. So, uh, let's go, Willie. Oh, sure, sure, okay. But uh, if she's got any friends, pal, you know me. Oh, yeah, I know you, and uh, I'll see you later, Willie. So long. See you. I thought we'd be seeing each other like this. Me either. What's it like? What? When you're down there in the submarine, what do you think about? Oh, I think about a lot of things. You? You know, I'd almost forgotten what you look like in a bathing suit. Well, that's a nice thing to say. Well, I didn't mean <laughs> I know. Funny. What? Well, back in New York, we used to neck. Mm, I don't like that word. But you know, I haven't kissed you since we got here. That's not my fault. I wish you didn't have to go back. Me? Well, it's nothing. You got a great skipper. There's nothing to it. Hey, I haven't heard us yet. I never will. I wouldn't think there's any war out there. There isn't. Not tonight. So 
we come up on a broadside, see? Whack, whack, whack. I fire three torpedoes. Bloom, she's done. Finished. A 20,000 ton ship, the Fui Maru. The skipper says, Wilson, you disobeyed orders. I told you one torpedo. I says, Captain, sir, court martial. I deserve it. He says, no, 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 Wilson. Let's just keep this quiet. Just between us. But I'm putting in for a citation for you. You saved the sailfish, and I'm grateful. Right, Lenny? That's the way I heard it. Bushwalk. How do you like that? Bushwalk. And me saving the world for democracy. USS Sculpin left Pearl Harbor for patrol in the Carolines. She stopped to refuel at Johnson Island and left on November the 7th, 1943. Her station was directly north of the truck to intercept any Japanese force during the Gilbert Islands campaign. On November the 18th, she made contact with a large enemy convoy. But her luck was running out. Badly damaged under depth charge attack, she was forced to surface. The enemy closed in for the kill. <laughs> Under orders, all hands abandoned ship. Among them, electricians made Leonard Harrison and his pal Boney. The 41 survivors of the Sculpin were taken to Truck Island. Then they were split into two groups. 20 in one, 21 in the other. We were put aboard two aircraft carriers and sailed for Japan. One of the parties was aboard the carrier Chuyo. She was officially listed as an escort aircraft carrier, 20,000 tons. You know, this kind of reminds me of a joint I used to eat at on the Boston Post Road. Yeah, like those beef sandwiches, hot pink gravy and Tastes like soft, hot cardboard. Figure they got the same cook on this ship? I mean, this isn't beef. That's what bothers me. Lenny, you think we'll make it okay? How do you mean? Well, what I mean is, you think we'll get back all right after the war's over? Sure. Sure we will. I'd like to keep on living. Sally and I want to get married. Hey, swell. You never said anything. Well, we've been trying to keep it a secret. Buddy, I'm putting in right now to be your best man. Good. Yeah, it'd be good. You want to finish this, Lenny? I'm not very hungry. December 3rd, 1943, at 1745, USS Sailfish was fighting a 40 to 50 knot wind. Visibility varied from zero to 500 yards. At 2348, radar got a contact, ranged 9,500 yards. And 10 minutes later, three more targets were contacted. Battle station torpedo! <laughs> They're coming into pretty close range. Fast, too. Can't see a thing in this! That last contact probably the destroyer. We'll go for the biggest pip. Steer course 300. Zero, zero. Clear the bridge! Clear the bridge! Dive! Dive!
Hey, you think Willie's really still at Pearl? Who knows? What a guy. Did I ever tell you about the time he met a girl in Portsmouth? Uh -uh. The Japanese carrier was still unaware of the impending attack. Sailfish dove to 40 feet and came right to course 340 degrees true for a shot at the biggest ship on the radar. Be a battleship or a carrier. Make ready the forward tubes. Make ready the forward tubes. Steady on course. Range. Mark. 2,800 yards. I got a few little boys. This is going to be a big one. A big fat one. <laughs> that crazy guy. <laughs> Oh, very funny. Oh, lots of laughs. If he hadn't broken his leg, he'd be right here with us now. Uh-uh. He'd still be back on truck chasing some dame. <laughs> <laughs> Forward tube slide. Range. Mark. 2,400 yards. We'll shoot four torpedoes set at 12 feet. 10 degrees total spread. Open out of torpedo tube doors forward. Open out of doors forward. Open out of doors forward. Aye, aye. Oh, me for some sleep. Yeah, me too. Good night, pal. Night, Lenny. It was 12 minutes after midnight when the torpedoes were fired. Shoot! Fire one. Fire two. Fire three. Fire four. The unseen, unknown target. Escort aircraft carrier Chuyo. Two hits, number one and four torpedoes. You hear that, boy? We hit her bullseye! Here we go again. Rick for depth charge. For nine hours, the battle continued. Sailfish boring in on the wounded carrier. The Japanese destroyers hunting them. At 0942, the carrier was hit for the third time. <laughs> At 0946, the Chuyo was going down and was cheering aboard the sailfish. And not a man knew that 20 survivors of her sister ship, the Sculpin, were going down with her. One, only one, survived the sinking, and he was taken to Japan. USS Squalus renamed Sailfish. A war record read seven vessels sunk, 45,029 tons, including the aircraft carrier Chuyo of 20,000 tons. She received the Presidential Unit Citation. I'll be back in a moment. I'm sure that every day we live makes us more aware of the irony of fate. On that day in 1939, when the Sculpin stood by the sunken Squalus, no one dreamed that they were helping to save an instrument that would eventually destroy part of her own crew. Fortunately, when the sailfish sank the carrier Chuyo, she had no idea the Sculpin survivors were aboard. But if a commanding officer had known, what else could he have done? Can you imagine the frame of mind of a man in such a predicament? Think about it. What would you do? Please join us again for another thrilling chapter of the silent service. Take her down, and off goodbye, through the deep blue underneath the ocean. We'll control the ocean wide, from down, down underneath the sea. Take the force for past the world, in the future yet to be. That's the same as long as there.
frail fish and sculpin refitting. The ravages of endless days at sea repair. For the men, a respite from war, a few days in the world of normalcy. Dames. Hey, look at that. Hey, Willie! Oh, Willie! You stay! Hey, oh, good to see you! The guys I told you about from the sculpture. Oh, let me see. How are you? How long have you been in Pearl? About in yesterday. So we? Oh, well, this calls for a celebration. Listen, I know a place. Hey, uh, Willie, uh, I got a date. A date? Yeah. Oh, maybe she got a friend. Two or three. It's his girlfriend, Willie. Yeah, uh, she's with the Red Cross. She's stationed out here. Only found out about it today. So, uh, let's go, Willie. Oh, sure, sure, okay. But uh, if she's got any friends, pal, you know me. Oh, yeah, I know you, and uh, I'll see you later, Willie. Hello. See you. I never thought we'd be seeing each other like this. Me either. What's it like? What? When you're down there in the submarine, what do you think about? Oh, I think about a lot of things. You? You know, I'd almost forgotten what you look like in a bathing suit. Well, that's a nice thing to say. Well, I didn't mean it. <laughs> I know. Funny. What? Well, back in New York, we used to neck. Mm. I don't like that word. But, you know, I haven't kissed you since we got here. That's not my fault. She didn't have to go back. Me? Well, it's nothing. You got a great skipper. There's nothing to it. Hey, I haven't heard us yet. I never will. I wouldn't think there's any war out there. There isn't. Not tonight. So we come up on a broadside, see? Whap, whap, whap. I fire three torpedoes. Bloom! She's done. Finished. A 20,000 ton ship. The buoy, Maru. The skipper says, Wilson, you disobeyed orders. I told you one torpedo. I says, Captain, sir, Fort Marshall. I deserve it. He says, no, 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 Wilson. Let's just keep this quiet. Just between us. But I'm putting in for a citation for you. You saved the sailfish, and I'm grateful. Right, Lenny? That's the way I heard it. Bushwalk. How do you like that? Bushwa. And... She was taken to Portsmouth Navy Yard and work began to recondition her. Hey, you heard the latest? What? They're refitting a squalus. You kidding? No, oh, they've been working on it for a couple of months now. Is that right? I got a pal who knows. It's gonna be tough finding a crew for her. She's a jinx. Well, I don't know. She got back all right, didn't she? You mean if you were transferred to her, you wouldn't squawk? Uh-uh. I guess I'm not superstitious. You wouldn't get me inside her for double pay. <laughs> you got too much imagination, Willie. About a year after Squalus had sunk, she was recommissioned for active service and her name was changed to Sailfish. The Navy knew and understood the feelings of submariners who remembered and would have misgivings about sailing on the old Squalus. So they decided to give her a tough skipper and a picked crew whose imaginations were less prone to be fanciful. Sculpin and Sailfish both joined the submarine force Asiatic fleet. Sailfish skipper had amongst his jobs dispelling the shadow which still lay over the resurrected sub. She had yet to prove herself. Four days before Pearl Harbor in Manila, another link was added to the chain of events which drew tighter the bond between the Sculpin and the old Squalus, now Sailfish. A new man joined the Sculpin's crew. Electrician's mate Leonard Harrison reporting for duty, sir. Hey, look what I dug up. Lenny! <laughs> what gun? How come? Orders. He's replacing Paulman. No 
Lenny, this is swell. Hey, Lenny, you know what they're calling your old ship? The squalefish. How do you like that? Get it? Squalus? Sailfish? Squalefish. <laughs> yeah, I heard. Anybody know where she is? Oh, she's out here, wouldn't you know? Just star luck. Voodoo the whole division. Well, come on, Lenny, I'll show you around. Okay. December 7th, 1941. Pearl Harbor. A surprise attack. December 8th, Manila. It was happening there as well. Only 33 men were saved. The sculpin, like an anxious relative, standing by. Amongst the survivors was electrician's mate Leonard Harrison. Next round's on me. No, not tonight. Oh, it's a welcome home party, Lenny. Yours. Oh, come on, you guys. I mean, that's no, wrong. No, 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 Night's our night. Okay. Okay. But I want to tell you one thing. I wouldn't be sitting here tonight like this if it weren't for you guys on the sculpture. Oh, I sure you would. Somebody would have found you. It's a long time down there. Just wait. Listen, boy, you're a hero. You didn't do anything, but you're a hero. Name in the papers and everything. The guys in the engine room, the ones that didn't get out, well, come on, come on, let's drink up. Sure, the next ones are on me. Hey, Lenny, good to have you back, boy. Hey, four more of the same. Three months later, Navy salvage crews raised the squalers from the bottom. Portsmouth Navy Yard and work began to recondition it. You heard the latest? What? They're refitting a squalus. You kidding? No, they've been working on it for a couple of months now. Is that right? I got a pal who knows. It's gonna be tough finding a crew for her. She's a jinx. Well, I don't know. She got back all right, didn't she? You mean if you were transferred to her, you wouldn't squawk? Uh-uh. I guess I'm not superstitious. You wouldn't get me inside her for double pay. You got too much imagination, Willie. About a year after Squalus had sunk, she was recommissioned for active service and her name was changed to Sailfish. The Navy knew and understood the feelings of submariners who remembered and would have misgivings about sailing on the old Squalus. So they decided to give her a tough skipper and a picked crew whose imaginations were less prone to be fanciful. Sculpin and Sailfish both joined the submarine force Asiatic fleet. Sailfish skipper had amongst his jobs dispelling the shadow which still lay over the resurrected sub. She had yet to prove herself. Four days before Pearl Harbor in Manila, another link was added to the chain of events which drew tighter the bond. But hey, Lenny, you know what they're calling your old ship? The Squalefish. How do you like that? Get it? Squalus? Sailfish? Squalefish. <laughs> yeah, I heard. Anybody know where she is? Oh, she's out here, wouldn't you know? Just star luck. Voodoo the whole division. Well, come on, Lenny, I'll show you around. Okay. December 7th, 1941. Pearl Harbor. A surprise attack. December 8th, Manila. It was happening there as well. The headquarters had known it was coming. The submarines had already taken up patrol duties. Among them, Sculpin and Sailfish. 
They were at sea when the raid started. Now was the time for sailfish to prove itself. Down scope. Battle stations. Look like troop ships. Three, no, four escorts. Bearing, mark. Down scope. We'll fire three torpedoes from the four tubes. Three fish spread. Set the depth to 20 feet. Well, let's get rid of that squalish jinx, huh? This is a shooting observation. Up scope. Change. Bearing. Mark. Three three six. Range. Mark. One eight five zero. Oh. Shoot. Fire one. Fire two. Fire three. How long? Thirty seconds. Destroyer, get a setup. Stand by. Shoot. Take her down. The torpedoes fired at the troop ship either missed or went too deep. The fourth aimed at the destroyer might have hit but it could not be confirmed. On May 23, 1939, the USS Squala stood out to sea for a test dive in the waters off Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Aboard the vessel were a full complement of officers and men, and a naval architect. It was a routine exercise. The men knew their jobs. There was nothing out of the ordinary. Off the Isle of Shoals, the order was given to execute the dive. Still everything routine, smooth. She went down, but now instead of leveling off, kept going. Down, down. Suddenly, what had been routine became a frantic emergency, a mechanical failure, and the valve wouldn't close. The squalus became a headline in the morning papers. She settled on the bottom in 240 feet of water, trapped in her forward torpedo room, still alive, 33 men. They find a smoke rocket, red signal for emergency distress. Operating close by was her sister ship, the Sculpin. Sighting the smoke rocket, Sculpin spread the alarm by radio and sped for the scene herself. Well, you're through, boy. Finished. Uh-huh. Hey, what's the matter with you? Oh, I was just thinking about the squalus. Nothing we can do till we get there. Come on, boy, your deal. Do you know Lenny Harrison? Yeah. Oh, he was transferred to the square list a couple of days ago. Electrician's mate. Ah, that's tough. Nice guy. Yeah. We went to school together. You and them buddies, huh? I was kind of hoping he'd be with us. Yeah, it's too bad. Well, come on, let's play. Stop thinking about it. In response to the Sculpin's dispatch, the rescue ship Falcon and others were soon on the scene. Diving bell was attached to the forward escape hatch of the sunken ship, and miraculously, 33 men were saved. The sculpin, like an anxious relative, standing by. Amongst the survivors was electrician's mate Leonard Harrison. Next round's on me. No, not tonight. Oh, it's a welcome home party, Lenny. Yours. Oh, come on, you guys. I mean, that's no, right. no, oh, no, 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 but I want to tell you one thing. I wouldn't be... ...lay over the resurrected sub. 
she had yet to prove herself. Four days before Pearl Harbor in Manila, another link was added to the chain of events which drew tighter the bond between the Sculpin and the old squalers, now sailfish. A new man joined the Sculpin's crew. Electrician's mate, Leonard Harrison reporting for duty, sir. Hey, look what I dug up. Lenny! Are you sitting with gun? How come? Orders. He's replacing Paulman. No kid, Lenny, this is swell. Hey, Lenny, you know what they're calling your old ship? The squalefish. How do you like that? Get it? Squalus? Sailfish? Squalefish. Yeah, I heard. Anybody know where she is? Oh, she's out here, wouldn't you know? Just style luck. Voodoo, the whole division. Well, come on, Lenny, I'll show you around. Okay. December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor, a surprise attack. December 8, Manila. It was happening there as well. The headquarters had known it was coming. The submarines had already taken up patrol duties. Among them, Sculpin and Sailfish. They were at sea when the raid started. Now was the time for Sailfish to prove herself. Down scope. Battle stations. Like troop ships. Three, no, four escorts. Bearing, mark. Down scope. We'll fire three torpedoes from the four tubes. Three fish spread. Set the depth to 20 feet. Well, let's get rid of that squalish jinx, huh? This is a shooting observation. Up scope. Change. Bearing. Mark. Three three six. Range. Mark. One eight five zero. Oh. Shoot. Fire one. Fire two.